Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about this really interesting tweet that came out from DJI this week about a new quad they're going to announce next week at Mobile World Congress. Now I'm interested in it for a lot of different reasons. You guys know I love flying quads and anytime I hear there's new tech coming, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I cannot wait to see what that technology would involve. Now beyond that though, I'm also blown away by DJI announcing another quad. I can't get over the pace of engineering this company has been able to keep up over the last year. When you think about the Mavic Pro, which was a revolutionary new style of drone, brand new flying platform, Architecture was different, software was different, lensing was different, phenomenal product, right? That in and of itself is an 18-month proposition for most large corporations with everybody pulling in the same direction. But on the heels of that, to release the Phantom 4 Pro, then the Inspire 2, all in the space of about six months, that's enough, stop already. So for them to have another quad coming, it just blows my mind, quite honestly. And in my head, I've got this vision of them being buried somewhere in the side of a mountain in a secret laboratory, you know, cans of Red Bull all over the benches, guys working 24 by 7, just coming up with these wonderful electronic epiphanies. And every quad they release has got different changes that are fundamentally different in a lot of ways from the previous version of the quad. A lot of companies, when they put out quads, will change a little bit of it, tweak it a little bit, and then come out with a new model. That's not the case. If you look at these side by side, every iteration of this has been, in my opinion, almost a generation better than the last one, and that's in the span of less than 12 months. So everything I'm gonna give you today is speculative. I don't have any advanced information. I saw the tweet when you guys saw the tweet, if you even saw it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But for me, I wanna take an analytical approach to this, because again, as an engineer, I'm gonna look at the market space, try and figure out where they're at today, what products they've got today that fit into the market, maybe where there are gaps that they can exploit. Because from my perspective, DJI wants to own this market. So they've obviously identified a gap in that market that they don't play in yet, and they've got a quad coming to fill that gap. So I'm gonna give you a lot of, again, speculative opinions from my perspective, because I've done a ton of research on this, of where I think this quad may fit. And we may end up with three or four possible end, end states, if you will, for what the quad's gonna look like. And then we'll all know next week whether I was right or I was completely off the mark, right? And again, it'll be kind of interesting to watch that. So the interesting thing too, in addition to the fact that they're coming out with a new quad, and this is the intriguing part for me, is the way it was announced. So the tweet that came out was very vague in what it was gonna be. It just said, Mobile World Congress, we're gonna be there with a slight picture. If you've seen it, it's actually on the screen now. It's got a picture of the leg and the motor and the propeller. It doesn't really tell you anything. It kind of reminds me back to, you know, the days of Apple when they were sort of releasing a product and they'd have a corner of the device shown and you're like, oh my gosh, what is that? So it gets your it gets your pulse, you know, moving. In addition to that, it's Mobile World Congress, right? And for me, that's a gigantic venue, but it's not a US-based venue, which is where a lot of new products are typically released. It's typically a mobile kind of a convention where you see phones and portable tablets and power supplies and things like that. So for Quad to be released there, it's kind of an interesting venue. And the other thing that was really intriguing to me was the fact that the tweet didn't come from DJI directly. It came from DJI Enterprises account, which is the company that works on the commercial stuff, right? So they're larger quads and the ones that are used in aerial surveillance and FLIR cameras and spraying crops and things like that. So right away I'm thinking, do they have another commercial quad coming? Well then why would you announce it at Mobile World Congress? So a lot of conflicting things in there and that's really what makes it so intriguing. There's a lot of sort of skullduggery going on here. So if you hang on, I'm gonna go through it and I'll put some charts below of sort of the timelines. I also am gonna be tweeting an awful lot about this. So I've got our Twitter uh, account handle here. You can actually subscribe to us on Twitter. As the more information I get, and again, this is all speculative because none of us know where this is going. I'm just guessing and I'm trying to give you my best guess possible for what this product might look like. But if you follow the Twitter account, as this thing's being released, and as their announcement being made, I'll fill in some of the blanks there. And I'm gonna do my darndest to get my hands on whatever it is they release as quickly as possible. So like I do in all my clips, I can tear it apart and give you some reviews of it and do some comparisons with other products on the market. So anyway, I've talked enough in this introduction. Hang on and I'm gonna get into it in a couple of minutes. And thanks for watching. The first market segment that DJI could compete in, which is a gap for them presently, is the entry-level quad market. They've never had a product in that space because of the cost, because the cost of $100 and less means that they've got to be very simplistic quads. 
That market is based on volume, selling a lot of them, making a very small profit, but making it up on volume. I don't see DJI wanting to compete in that market space because they're really about sophistication and higher end quads, you know, with feature sets that appeal to people that are experienced quad flyers and, and all the whiz bang stuff they build into the higher end quads. So even though there's a gap there for them, I don't see them introducing a quad uh, at this conference that's going to fill that gap. So I think that that's a bit of a red herring and I'm going to discount that completely. The next category, which I think is more likely, is the hobby grade quad, where it's between $500 and $100, so somewhere under $500 quad. Now, in that space, they've already got a product that they've got the Phantom 3 Standard, which is a wonderful quad, it's a really good value for the money, but it's been out there a while and it's getting a little bit older. Not to mention the fact that the Phantom 3 production line is different than the Phantom 4, than the Mavic, than the Inspire. So keeping that fourth production line running is pretty expensive. So to replace that quad, they've really got three options, and I'll go through those now. The first option would be to design a brand new quad from scratch. That's an expensive proposition. That takes a lot of engineering effort, it takes a ton of marketing effort, a lot of money to spin up another production line. Then you've got all the headaches of first generation products, putting it out the door, test it like crazy. I don't see that happen, and I, th I think that's a very expensive play for them, and I'd be surprised, very surprised actually, if we get a new ground up build to fill that spot, if, if indeed they're putting out a hobby grade quad. So I think I'll discount that one. I don't think that's very likely. The other option they've got is to take an existing platform, whether it be a Phantom 4 or a Mavic, and modify that to fill the gap. Now remember, they've got to tweak it enough to get it under the $500 mark or close to the $500 mark to fit that gap. Because that market segment is very important. There's a ton of consumers that buy a quad that's $500 and less. If DJI can take some of the prowess they've, they've built in the high-end quads and somehow reduce the price to get it into that market space with a brand new quad, that would be pretty amazing. So let's look at their two options there. The Phantom 4 has been out for a little bit of time and they've just upgraded it with the Phantom 4 Pro. They could take the original Phantom 4 and modify that airframe and re-engineer it to get the price down and release it as a Phantom 4 standard. And that would be really nice because it is a modern quad. It would allow them to eliminate the Phantom 3 production line and only have the Phantom 4, the Mavic, and the Inspire lines running as well as their commercial drone. So it would save them money by reducing the number of production lines going. They could reuse a lot of the technology from that airframe and sort of accommodate, if you will, that price point there. So I think that's a possibility. You may see this new quad look a lot like a Phantom 4, but somehow less expensive, maybe less feature sets, certainly less feature sets, maybe not as great a camera, but something that will give the average consumer a phenomenal quad for a $500 or less price point. So that's, that's scenario number two. Scenario number three, which is likely as well, is to take the Mavic. Now the Mavic Pro came out, which is a high-end quality quad that's collapsible. You guys all know that. They could release that in a less sophisticated form and call it like a Mavic standard, right? And that would fit the bill as well. Um, I think they could re-engineer that quad to get it into that price range. They have to pull a lot of features and functions out of it. But scenario three does look at the Mavic Pro being re-released as a less functional quad, maybe less sophisticated quad as maybe a Mavic standard. I don't know, maybe that'll fill the gap. So of those three scenarios, Build it from scratch, probably not likely. Phantom 4 modifications to release it as a Phantom 4 standard, probable. And a Mavic, again, re-engineered to be a Mavic standard, again, probable. I think both of those are plausible scenarios. Another exciting possibility is that the quad that's being announced next week is a quad built specifically for drone racing. Now, that's a market segment that DJI has not released a product into yet, even though they make all the components required to build that quad. They have an entire propulsion division that builds very sophisticated motors and controllers and blades that are high performance designed to work in a racing quad environment. So you'll find a lot of people that put their own quads together will use those DJI components to build their quads. So it makes sense to me that that may be a market segment they've now identified as something they want to pay a lot more attention to and have actually put together a quad to fit that, uh, fit that gap in the market. Now, I think they've got a really good proposition there because if you look at the market in general, even though the consumer space is gigantic, there's a rabid following of people that love to do drone racing. And worldwide, there are large contests all over the planet that pay big money for people coming in and racing quads through obstacle courses against other quad flyers. So that's a whole market segment in addition to the consumer space that really needs some attention being paid to from DJI. So. The next possibility, I think, in addition to what I talked before about the hobby class quads, is that they're releasing a complete quad for drone racing as part of this announcement. 
The last possibility, which is probably less likely than the first two I talked about, is that DJI is going to release some new commercial quad into the market space. Now remember, they do a lot in the commercial space already. They've got quads that will do surveillance and surveys. They'll do infrared search and rescue missions with the FLIR camera. They even have a quad called the Aquas MG1 that will do crop spring. You can load it up with fertilizer or pesticide, turn it loose, and it will go out and fly a predetermined mission over crops and actually take care of those crops for you. And it's all about efficiency, right? So if these quads can do what a tractor would do and do it in way less time for less money, that's a good place to go. And that commercial space is blowing up. As big as the consumer space is, the commercial space seems like a new company is popping into that space every week. And actually 3DR, which used to be a, a big consumer quad company, has pivoted now into a commercial quad company. So maybe DJI is looking at that market space thinking we need to exploit that a little bit more. Now what adds a little bit of credence to that particular uh, concept is the fact that this tweet did come from DJI Enterprise, which would be involved with that side of the business. So I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens next week, but I'm putting that on the list as a possibility. Even though it's a distant possibility compared to the other two scenarios I've laid out, I still think it's a possibility. So stay tuned and we'll have to see what happens next week. I know I gave you a ton of information today and I hope it was helpful. And again, it's all speculation on my part. None of us really know what this announcement's going to be next week, but we'll know in a couple of days. And I like to look at a puzzle like this in advance of the announcement and try to figure out, from my perspective, if I were working for DJI and responsible for releasing a new product, what part of the market have I not served yet? Is there a gap someplace that I can fill with a product I can build to welcome more people into the DJI family? So that's what I've done, is taken that approach with a clean sheet of paper and a sharp pencil, sat down and really analyzed what the market looks like today, which has pretty much brought me to four conclusions. There's four possible scenarios of what this quad can be. Now, the best part about this is I'm going to list them in what I consider to be probability, so the most probable to the least probable, and then next week I'm either going to look like a genius or an idiot when they make the announcement, so it'll be kind of fun to watch that. So anyway, the four scenarios I think that are likely start with the most probable, which is a racing quad. I think the DJI sees that market as evolving and exploding, and it's a place they don't play today. I mean, they make components for that area, but they don't build a quad that fits in that space. I think that market is rabid fans of drone racing, and they know the name DJI, but it isn't there yet. Now, we already know that DJI was working on a very sophisticated set of FPV goggles that were talked about for the Mavic Pro release, but never released to the market. So maybe there's a combination of the two of those coming out. We'll have to see where that goes. So that's the most likely scenario for me. The second most likely scenario is that they're going to replace their hobby class quad with something new. Now, again, the Phantom 3 standard is a great quad. It's in that space. The price is right. But the production line is separate from the other production lines, and it's expensive to keep that production line running. So to me, it makes sense that either the Phantom 4 or the Mavic Pro will morph into something in that space. So that's the second most likely scenario. The third most likely scenario is that they're designing a brand new quad from scratch, which I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to say it's beyond the, the realm of possibility, but that's a lot of work. So I put it on the list because I'm always open. So we'll see if that comes true or not. But that's the third on the list. And the fourth one is a brand new commercial quad. Maybe they're going to take some of their commercial quads and make them smaller, or more sophisticated, less expensive to allow more farmers to use them to spray their crops or more surveyors to use them to sort of check out a field, engage a field, things like that. So, and, and the reason that one's on the list primarily is because the tweet came from DJI Enterprise, right? Which is the group that does that. And I thought, okay, they could be doing that just to throw us off the scent, which is probably the case, but let me keep it on the list anyway. So those are the four possible scenarios. Again, if I've missed anything or you have questions on this or you have opinions on what you think it's going to be, drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer any questions I can. Again, I have no information on this, so I'm kind of guessing as you all are, but we'll know soon enough and we'll take it from there. I enjoy doing these clips, as I say every time. If you guys are finding value in them, thumbs up are always good. Hit the Twitter account, subscribe to that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe today. That way you'll get notices when we publish new clips and you'll be able to follow us uh, and, and know right away when something new is put up. So anyway, thanks an awful lot for watching today. I hope you're enjoying these. And as I always say, happy flying.